Ezekiel 34. Now when we get into Ezekiel 34, we got to keep in mind John chapter 10, where Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. And you can run John chapter 10, Ezekiel chapter 34, in context with each other. Because when he's talking to the Pharisees and Sadducees, he says, the hiring doesn't care for the sheep. That's what he's talking about right here. And John chapter 10, though he was born unto the Jews, he knew he was going to be rejected by the Jews. So the context runs to the second advent, and we're going to see second advent passages here. He says, The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesied against the shepherds, plural, of Israel. Prophesy. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds. So here's an aimed message by Ezekiel through God. Woe, and when God says, Woe, you better stop. Woe be to the shepherds of Israel. And that's what John chapter 10. I know he says that we ha I have other sheep. But he's speaking to the nation of Israel. He's speaking to Sadducees. He's speaking to the, the Pharisees. He's not talking to the church. But you can take the context and you can spiritually apply it to the church. And I will. To do that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flock? So... Evidently, the flocks are not being fed. But the shepherds are being fed. Ye eat the fat. Now, in Leviticus chapter 3, verse 17, it is forbidden for the Jews to eat the fat and blood. He clothe you with the wool. So you're eating the animals, you're, you're clothing yourself with the, with the wool, Ye kill them that are fed. So those that do get fed, you kill them. That's what the Catholic Church does. When you, you're going to get into the Word of God, you're going to get into the Bible, kill them so they don't get in the Bible. Kill them so the Bible does not get promoted. Kill them so the Bible doesn't get published. But ye feed not the flock. The disease... Have you not strengthened? And we are in the area today of COVID-19. And what, what has happened? Now I'm going to speak in church as a general. Churches have closed their doors. In a time of turmoil, in a time of troubles and problems and disease, and you go running to the church and the doors are shut. That's a problem. Any religion, any church. And many are still not open. Neither have ye healed that which was sick. You got pastors today who don't even go to a hospital visit. Nor even anybody in the church. Neither have you bound up that which was broken. You know, broken leg, you don't take care of it. Neither have you brought again that which was driven away. Somebody drove the sheep away. And there are cults out there, such as the Jehovah Witnesses, they go after Christians. And they snag them Christians. And the great pastor of the churches don't go back after them. They go try to find new sheep. And bring them to church, invite them to church, and to hell with anybody who's left the church. And I got one pass. Oh, well, where's this person? Listen, I'm not asking to be rude. I'm not asking to be nosy. Is I'm praying for this person. Where's this person? Well, I don't know. What do you mean, don't know? It's your job to know. Neither have you sought that which was which lost. Now, a 
applying to the Christian. A Christian can be lost to the fact is they're saved, but they have no idea, no direction where they're going. And they fall away. I had a pastor of the church one time. We left the church. I think we left the church rightly. I'm not going to get it. But, then, you know, we came back and you know we needed to be in church. We came back. I, I thought you fell off the earth. Is that what kind of attitude you're going to have about your... I just love my flock. I just love my church. I thought you fell off the earth. Well, I left because... because you caused a division in my family. You caused a hardship in my family. You, you, you didn't even bother. It only got worse later after that. But with force and with cruelty, have you ruled it? You are the sh You're going to do what I tell you to do or you can leave. I had a pastor one day, you're not called to, you can't go start a church because I didn't give you permission to start it. You are now de-churched. You know? That's today's Baptist churches. There are people sick and wounded. There are people who are, who are broken and there are people who, who leave, and they don't know why they left. They're backslidden, and they don't know how they got into it. And there are people who fall away to Jehovah Witnesses and other cults. And the pastor and the deacons or the, the trustees don't do nothing about it. But let's go knock on doors. Let's go invite them into the church. And you wonder why you don't have anybody come to your church because you didn't take care of the people that were in your church. Because it takes more work to care for the sheep who aren't sheep of God than it is. All right, just come to church. Come to church. Oh, you mean I, I got to call you? I got to go to the hospital? I got to spend time in prayer for you? more effort to care for the sheep than just bite other people in the church. Get them to say this prayer. It's another notch. We count you among the people. You're amongst the tenants. So Jesus came and said, listen, I'm the good shepherd. I give my life for the sheep. And that's throughout church history. But you don't see it in the lives of seeing church age. That's a shame. They were scattered. Wherever they, they left, they went. Because there's no shepherd. He just got finished speaking to the shepherds of Israel. Then he turned around and said, well, there's no shepherd. Contradiction. No, there's a shepherd, but there's no shepherd. He's got the title... But he ain't got the duty. There are going to be a lot of pastors and preachers, judgment seat of Christ or even the great white throne judgment. They got the title, but they sure don't have the credentials. They became meat to all the beasts of the field. And today that would be religion. Like I said, Jehovah Witnesses. There are many born again born again Christians in the Jehovah Witness movement. And they come knocking on your door and they got all kinds of goody little things to show you and they deceive you. Now I've been here at this one address in Daytona Beach up I don't know how long. Many, many, many years. And before COVID, I had a lot of Jehovah Witnesses come knock on my door. And I'm able to do battle with them, but that's not the point. Many Jehovah Witnesses come knocking on our door, and while we're away, they, they leave the watchtower in my doorknob and all that. But not once have I had a Baptist church come knock on my door. Not once have I had a Bible-believing Christian come knock on my door. Not once.
Oh, there are pastors out there. There are churches out there. Yeah. Where there's no shepherd. And they became meat to all the beasts of the field religion. And they were scattered. Today, I said, churches, and Baptist churches are closed because of COVID-19. So they go run somewhere else. They go run to YouTube ministries. They go run to Facebook ministries. And they're getting deceived. And they're getting the wrong food. And they're getting the wrong attention. And what they're going to learn with Facebook ministry and the YouTube ministries and all that is when they're on a hospital bed, or when they're at a funeral home, that man on Facebook ain't going to come to their funeral, ain't going to come visit them on the hospital bed. I already told you there's pastors of churches that don't even visit their own congregation in the hospital. Well, you didn't ask us. Do I need to ask? When you see one of your sheep limping, are you going to wait for him to say, hey, you know, I'm limping here? There are some tall tale signs that that's something wrong with that sheep. It's your job as a shepherd to go. At least a doctor, you go to the and he'll perform all kinds of tests to figure out what's wrong. Well, we're too busy with other things, other programs, other things of interest, trying to bring more people in the church rather than take care of the people that are in the church. My sheep, Israel, wander through all the mountains, upon every high hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon all the faces. So they're everywhere, anywhere. No, we just have a great church building. All right, where are the fleet? Where are the sheep that have been and are church members on the church membership role of your church? Where are they? Where are most of them? Well, I don't know. Did you try going to find out? Did you check in to find out? I mean, has there been a church member? who has fallen down in their home, unable to get any help. And no one of the church is to find out they've fallen down and have any harm. You know, it takes the neighbors or we smell something strong and older and decaying that death has happened. Well, you know, he was a member of our church. He was a fine, good fellow. How come anybody in your church didn't go find out he was falling on the floor and died? I only say that because I've heard I've heard of it. And none did search or seek after them. That's a shame. And yet well he wasn't important. He wasn't anybody important in Archie. He didn't have the money. He didn't do this. He didn't do that. He didn't worship my holy feet. And yet Paul mentions that the least commonly member of the body of Christ is the most needful member of the body of Christ. Now, I never seen my spleen, but my spleen is something important. I have never seen one of two of my kidneys. And yet, with all the turmoil I've had, the doctors are very interested in my kidneys and what my lab tests show as far as my kidney function. I can't say I don't need my kidneys because if I don't, if I don't have my kidneys, I'm dead, or I gotta be on dialysis. And there are parts of our body. You with uh, I don't need it. You know, our earlobes or the, um, uh, what's the thing down here? Appendants. And they actually say, you know what? There is a need. 
And God may have put that person in your body of church. And you may not think they're important. They may not think they've got the money and they don't worship. You know, God may be saying, you know what? I want to see how you treat them. We had one church, my wife and I, and we noticed we, we were in two or three different churches, and we noticed I don't know how often this happened, but we had noticed in our that when the church is starting to fall, God would send us one woman. Well, different women. And they would cause such a ruckus. They would actually challenge the pastor. I'd be like, go, go, go do it. You see, we put people on pedestal on how they treat us, how they love us, how much they give. That's a shame. Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. And that, in Jesus' time, they heard the word of the Lord because they heard it right out of Jesus' mouth. What better word of God can you get from out, I don't want to say the horse's mouth, but out of God's mouth? As I live, there's that old, say of the Lord God. Surely because my fleet, my flock became a prey, and my flock became meat to every beast of the field. Wait till those Jews are in the tribulation period. And they become meat for the beast. Literally, the, the Catholic mass and drinking of blood. Not the blood of Jesus, the blood of the Jews. Remember Revelation chapter 2, when that child, that Jewish child is going to be born and the devil waited to devour him? That's why I don't do Christmas mass. Because that's an abomination in the scriptures. And there's coming a greater Christmas. It's going to be a Jewish mass. They're going to kill the Jews and they're going to literally drink their blood. They're drinking the blood of Jews right now. They say that literal body and blood of Jesus is what they partake in the Lutheran in the Catholic Mass. It, you ask him, it is the literal. Okay, Jesus is Jewish. You are eating and drinking literal Jewish blood and body. And they are the sheep of God. I will require my flock at their hand. God's going to hold every pastor accountable. Every shepherd, God's going to, every evangelist, every street preacher, every Sunday school teacher, every deacon, and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. If you don't feed your flock, you're going to be held accountable to God. And don't think, oh, I give a salvation. And I have one path. I give a salvation every Sunday. You're not feeding the sheep. You are feeding the sheep goat food, and sheep don't live on goat. Man, if God would show these pastors the spiritual condition of the sheep, how the, the the, the, the meat on the sheep are sticking to their bones and you can count the ribs. While you preach your salvation message and come forward and come to the altar. Meanwhile, the sheep are starving and don't know nothing. Some born-again Christians believe that Jesus died on Good Friday and rose or re resurrected on Easter morning. That's a pastor's not feeding in his flock. You will be. And you, go ahead. Say what you hate me what you will. You will stand before God in your heresy. Because beyond any mathematical problem, from kindergarten, one plus one, or one car and two car, one dog and one cat equals, to algebra, 
and trigonometry and chemistry of all the grades and from, from kindergarten to, to college, university. You cannot get, unless you do the new American math, you cannot get three days and three nights from Friday to Sunday morning. You can't, unless you're a Catholic or a Catholic Baptist. And you're walking in the night with your eyes closed and wondering why you're bumping against God and why it hurts. Don't you got them off Christmas? Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves anymore. Now listen, that's television. That's t televangelism. That's nothing more than uh, Olstein and all that. They just want your money, and it's been found and it's been proven that the, the checks have been cashed, but the prayer list go in the dumpster. It has been proven. It has been found, and people still. And all the faith healers and all the gimmicks they and people still. But it, it's not all the shepherds' fault. It, it, it's the naive sheep. The sheep are the dumbest animals in the world, and God picked the, the perfect animal for dumb shep for dumb Christian sheep. We're dumb. A shepherd can build a fence and move that gate three inches to the right or left, and that sheep is going to stand where the gate was. Uh, stupid, move to the right and move to the left. Uh, what do I do? They won't pick up the Bible and study for themselves. They won't try the pastor out. Why are all these cults? Why are there all these religions? Because people are lazy to Bible reading. And then they get modern Bible where Satan has removed and added and subtracted and footnoted and, and gloss over. And they just get tickled and fancy free. And, hey, hey, I like that. I'm a good person. We got a great passion. It makes us all feel good. You're getting the wrong food. You get too much sugar, you're going to end up with diabetes and you're going to have all kinds of problems. You need some salt. But don't get too much salt because then you're going to get high blood pressure. I will deliver my flock from their mouth. <laughs> Well, doesn't that isn't that what a wolf in sheep's clothing is? So God is liking the shepherds to the false teachers. I mean, they're they're not teaching heresy; they're just not taking care of the sheep, and they are feeding themselves off the sheep. They are grabbing a, a sheep from the flock removing the wool to clothe themselves, then they cut open that sheep on their dinner plate and start eating. You say, what's that? Well, I will give you the messages you want. I will lavish your two times that you come to church every year, Easter and Christmas. I will lavish you during those times because you come in and bring your money. Well, I want your money. I'll even go run to Malachi. I will pervert the scriptures so we can bring money into our church. You're denying the faith of God right there. I will deliver my flock from their mouth. They may not be meat for them. So... For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. That's Jesus, Lord God. You know, that's a Jehovah Witness. They don't believe it. 
He came, the Bible says, he came to seek that which was lost. There it is. Luke 19.10, I think, 19.10 or 19.20. There it is. So I guarantee when Jesus dealt with him, he's got Ezekiel 30. Well, it wasn't Ezekiel 34, but he had Ezekiel in his mind. And you know those that knew the scriptures knew. That's exactly what he was saying. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day, that he is among his sheep that are scattered. So Jesus said there was a shepherd that had 99 sheep and one sheep went and got lost. And he went out and left the 99 to go get that one sheep. And then you hear preachers preach about the 99 and one. And then how many ones do they have that left their fold that they went after to go get? Hypocrite. I got a wonderful message about that one sheep that Jesus went out. And they'll they will use it to go out and get the lost sheep, you know, that the lost souls. No lost person in the Bible is called a sheep. Only those that are of God. Listen, Israel corporate is always God's sheep. And there'll be individual Jews that go into hell, but corporately, those Jews are God's sheep. So we will use that one, you know, go out and get that one lost soul. Hey, preacher. Hey, pastor. What about go get that one last, that one lost person that left your church? Find out what he needs. All right, he may have left for bad cause. It may not be anything of the church. It may not be anything of Jesus. It may not be anything. It may be worldly and carnal. But did you try to bring that one back? I will deliver them from all places where they have been scattered in a cloud and dark day. There's the second advent. Anything where anywhere they went, it's your job to go get them. And they refuse and they're carnal and they're just backsliding. All right, you did your part. But did you do your part? Have any Christians gone to the Jehovah Witnesses and their pastors have tried to bring them out? How hard did you try? Did you put more effort into that loss? And I mean, don't mean loss and going to hell, but loss, wayward saint of God, child of God. Have you put more effort into them than you do trying to bring the world into your church? I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the country. We will bring them to their own land. That's Israel. And, and this is the this is the second advent going into the millennium. And will feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers. What's that? Psalm twenty-three. Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want. He leads me by still waters. There it is. That's millennium. You know what the first place Joshua brought Israel to in the promised land? He brought them to a river, the Jordan River. And all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them in a good pasture. We've got a great church. Uh, 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 there's a good pasture coming. It ain't your church. Upon the high mountains of Israel shall their fold be, millennium. There shall they lie in good fold, Psalm 23, millennium. In a fat pasture, a lot of green, good water. Shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel, millennium. Second advent going to millennium. I will feed my flock, he said in John chapter 10, 
I am the good shepherd. I'll bring him to the good fold, to the good land. Verse 13, verse 14. The shepherds in Jesus' time were so great, they did not bring the float, the fold, the Israel, to the Messiah that was standing there walking amongst them. Matter of fact, when it came time, there the shepherds were crucify him. Then we just read where they, 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 they killed the sheep. I will feed my flock. It will cause them to lie down, Psalm 23, saith the Lord God. I will seek that which is lost. Luke 19.10 or 19.20, I, I came to seek that which is lost. There, there's the cross reference. And bring that which has been driven away. They are God's people. They've been driven away. God's going to bring them back. There are Christians out there. They're saved. They are the children of God. They have been driven away. And the Lord's going to come back and bring us all together at the rapture. I will bind that which was broken. I will strengthen that which was lost. I sick. I will destroy the fat and the strong. That's a tribulation passage. Because all those are fat and strong are the ones that have the mark. Those are not fat and strong. They can't eat. They can't get medical attention. They can't get care because they don't have the mark. I will feed them with judgment. So... If you are a person in ministry and you are doing wrong, God's going to judge you. And he'll judge you by the mercy that you show mercy. And he'll show judgment by the judgment you show. Plain and simple. Simple. 